and um, I find that when I started looking to Islam that I found something you know the picture was so different from what is portrayed in the media the fact that as you know as a woman you know Islam holds the woman in such a high honor in the society how the woman as a mother and a wife um, as a daughter as a mother and wife is treated like a queen in her home beforehand um, you know like from everybody I used to feel that you know everybody wants a piece of you they say that they respect the woman but you know that it's just they see them see the woman as just a sexual object so you know like friends and people that you know you know they, they only hang around with you or spend time with you if they can you know like if you fit into their crowd if you look right before you become Muslim all you care about is how good you look and if you go outside you're not looking your best then it's like oh you know no, you don't get any attention and nobody wants to speak to you, nobody likes you and you're just left behind and ignored a bit and all your friends get all the attention because they're looking better than you do. And the women try to attain that type of look as well, you know, to try and beautify themselves and make them and display themselves. But in Islam it's not like that. You're respected for who you are, you're respected for, um, you know, your piety and your actions rather than just what you look like or, I don't know, how many parties you've been to that week or how much gossip you know, stuff like that. Whereas in Islam, you know, the woman's required to cover her beauty and it's for herself and her husband and her immediate family, like her father and brother, to see. Now, as a Muslim, and I've been a Muslim for five years, yeah, you know, like, I'm comfortable with this role. In fact, I'm really happy, you know, that Islam has given us a definition for the roles of a man and a woman. You know, I went to university and I wanted to be a career woman. So a mother and a wife, yes, I would be. But, um, you know, I'd balance them all together and I, I want to make it out there. But I used to always say to my grandma, oh, I'll make my husband do my washing up and look after the kids and I'll go to work. And she used to have a, you know, nightmare. I used to find it hard that, you know, after like five years of studying at university that I had like to think twice about, should I pursue my career in engineering or should I, you know, think about having a family? When I came to Islam, there's complete, uh, completely different. Like, it's all set out for you nice and clearly, you know. Um, there's no confusion. The background that I came from, I came from West Indian um, background, Jamaican background and um, you know there's a lot of issues to do with family like um, there's a lot of uh, broken families, dysfunctional families, families there's a high ratio of um, father of homes which do not have fathers in, in the home and this is all as a result of the fact that there's no guidance. At first it was quite difficult but then as you know, once I got married, had children, and then, you know, like, my, your natural instincts take over. I think every mother would say that, you know, like, if they were working, that they would want to be at home with their children. When I came across Islam, and this issue of, you know, being a mother and a wife, it was something which it gave you such clear guidance on where you stand and how to um, uphold your role as a wife and as a mother how to bring up your children <laughs> and um, what it means to be a wife and what is the role of a husband and what are the rights and the duty of the husband and wife and I just found that like um, a great liberation uh, for me um, because because I think that was a problem before that people were doing things based on their own mind and that, that does give me comfort that when I get older I won't be you know, abandoned and left to rot in my old flat, you know, and my, my children not come and visit me, which is, unfortunately, I've had experience in that field where I've seen, worked in old people's home, where sons and daughters do not come and visit their elderly parents. You don't, you never see anybody come and visit them, you never see anybody, and they have children but the children must be come just at Christmas. Even at Christmas, you know, they're not even sent any Christmas cards. And I remember working at Christmas with the elderly people and trying to make them feel a bit more, a bit better. And it is, it is really heartbreaking when you go into certain old people's homes and all their life these people have looked after their children and all they can speak about is their children. And their children can't even be bothered to come and visit them once a week. 
And then the saddest thing is when they die, the elderly people, then the children come and take the inheritance. And I do feel relieved that, you know, inshallah, this is not what's going to happen to me, that my children will always be there for me. Because Islam requires them to do that. You know, the emphasis is on that, you know, paradise is in the feet of your mother. And when I first heard that as a Muslim, that made me cry because it's so, it's so, um, you know, emotional that the responsibility a child has to the mother. Um, coming to Islam is not just about, these are, these are some of the beautiful outcomes of practicing Islam. It's not the reason why one takes on Islam, we take it on because it's the truth. And even if by the, you know, Allah forbid, the child becomes misguided, um, at the end of the day you know that you're following the truth. And that's the most important thing and that you uphold your responsibility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recent years have experienced an extreme level of negative media portrayal of Islam and deliberate distortion and falsification of the Islamic way of life. Indeed, this negative depiction affects many in the general public and prevents sincere ideological debates. We propose Islam as an ideological alternative to liberal capitalism and urge our fellow human beings to research about Islam and find out for themselves about the true nature of Islam. Allah, the creator of this universe, says in the Quran, Alif Lam Ra. This is a book which we have revealed unto you, O Muhammad, in order that you might lead mankind out of darkness and into light by their Lord's leave to the path of the Almighty, the owner of all praise.